Uh, hi, I'm Margaret. And I'm Madeline. And the issue that we chose to investigate is regarding Chinese pangolins or Manus pentadactyla. Um, their populations are small, shy, and overexploited, leading to difficulties with them with finding them in addition to capture and monitoring the populations for research. And our aim is to find the best possible method or combinations of methods to study pangolin populations. The first potential method is with tracking devices, and these would have to be drilled into the keratin scales and attached with screws due to the shape of the penguin's head and scales, according to Sun et al. 2019. Um, we've included a diagram in the center of where the transmitters would be attached to the pangolins. The pros of this method are that the trackers can last up to two years and collect accurate data. However, the pangolins must be captured for this method, which can lead to increased stress and injury, and trackers can also fall off when the animals are digging. The second method we're including is community surveys, and these can be conducted through the mail or with in-person interviews in communities surrounding known pangolin habitat to determine how often they're sighted in the area. This can be a good method because it's relatively inexpensive and does not disturb the natural populations of pangolins. Um, on the other hand, it can be difficult to encourage community participation and the information may not be entirely accurate depending on the level of knowledge within the community as was found by Nash et al. 2016. Um, we also included a diagram of reported pangolin abundance and proportions of related hunting with the two diagrams in the center respectively. And this is depicting that where there are pangolins present, there seems to be an equal proportion of hunting in the area, which adds to the issue of exploitation. And at the bottom, we also included a chart in which Chinese pangolins are represented in green, showing that they fall around the middle of tracking durations in relation to other pangolin species. So another method that we included was camera traps. And so these traps are set out in areas that are predicted to be frequented by pangolins. And so that makes them able to capture more images of pangolins and avoids uh, confrontation with humans, which the pangolins would be trying to avoid. And there'd be less disturbance to their behavior. Um, the cons are that it wouldn't be random samples if the cameras are placed only in areas that pangolins were known to prefer or frequent. And it takes a lot of time to sort through camera trap data images. Um, another method is burrow sighting. So researchers go out and count the number of burrows and record the location and size and anything else that might be important. And the pros of this are that it can show signs of pangolins living in the area without actually needing the presence of the pangolin. Um, and the cool thing is that you can estimate uh, population density and the type of habitat that they prefer without actually needing to have the animal in front of you, according to Wilcox et al. 2019. But the cons are that it's possible to misidentify a burrow and because a lot of different species dig burrows and it's likely that burrows will be missed or that the animal who was using the burrow has died and is no longer part of the population. So our recommendations are to use a combination of all methods um, because these are very shy and hard to find creatures. We want to make sure that we have all of the opportunities to be able to view or capture them. So these community surveys, camera traps, and burrow sightings could reveal where the pangolins are located and then you could build off of that data and go out and attempt to capture individuals and use the tracking devices to be able to follow the path of pangolins and get more accurate location data. So um, our references were Ingram et al. 2019 from Global Ecology and Conservation, Cadewal et al. 2017 from the Journal of Mormology, Nash et al. 2016 from Biological Conservation, Sun et al. 2019 from Global Ecology and Conservation, Wilcox et al. from 2019 global ecology and conservation. So thank you for listening to our presentation. We hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section and we would love to answer them. Thank you.